was mine. Gentle, gentle. Okay. <laughs> Did you scramble the eggs? Yeah. Yeah, good job. Good morning, Gwendolyn. Can you say good morning? Good morning. Good morning, Griffin. Good morning. Good morning friends, welcome back to Julia at Home and this day in the life video. It is the Monday of the week of Thanksgiving here in the United States, so at the end of November. We're doing two days of school this week and then we're going to be, you know, just celebrating the holidays with family. I do have a lot to do today, including some cooking, so I'm gonna take you along with us, showing you how our days have been so far this fall. We've been getting started early, so we're already getting going with the school day here. It's, uh, let's see, it's about 8.30 in the morning now. So my oldest, who is in fourth grade, is making herself breakfast right now. Everybody else has already eaten. My husband helps make, make breakfast in the morning. My son, who is in second grade right now, has already practiced piano and he is currently reading to his father. And um, the little two, we have the three-year-old and the one-year-old are have eaten as well and they are running about. I'm going to clean up a little bit and then I'm going to be working with my three-year-old. I'm going to try to film as much as I can. There's a lot going on at once, so here we go. son here, my second grader, and he has his book out. So each of the kids have their own notebooks. So at the beginning of the week, usually on Sundays, I go through and I write in what I expect them to do for school each week. Um, some days we do group school. I don't um, write all that down. I just write group school down and then they can check things off. Actually, he did do that, so we should check that off. But um, this week's, again, it's light and he's already done his piano and his reading. So we did check those off, or he did. So that's great. So he's going to take a look at this and see what he has next. He's working on his reading, so um, we help him read it, and then he gets to choose which order, um, unless it's something that he needs help with and then he might need to wait. Okay, bud, what did you have left to do? I've got Biden, math, Okay, well, we're not doing group school yet, so which one of the other ones do you want to do first? Writing. Writing, okay, so it says cursive workbook, page 40. So just this page. So right, like last time, trace all of the tracing ones and do three of the shorter words. So these words here, the first three, do three of each. Just are all the way in the side. You should be able to fit that. And just two of the longer ones, okay? Quick update, so my second grader finished all of his individual subjects. I worked with my three-year-old on her Montessori activities, and um, my fourth grader is still working on her individual subjects. I am going to go ahead and start some bread with the three-year-old and the one-year-old. Um, it is normally our baking day. Um, today we are actually starting some bread dough that'll be baked either tonight or tomorrow morning. It needs to rise for a while. That will then be chopped up and turned into dressing or stuffing. It's not being stuffed in something, so dressing on Thanksgiving.
Uh, here's where we are. So we finished, we finished the bread. I made one dough with one child and one dough with the other child. Um, that doesn't always happen that I make two doughs, so that's actually, it's nicer when we can do it that way. And I've cleaned up a little bit. Um, my fourth grader is doing multiplication facts with her father right now. And I think she's almost done with that. So I'm going to wait. I'm still kind of cleaning up a little bit. I made myself a drink. And I'm gonna do copy work with her. Um, Cause I like to present the copy work. Um, it's Monday, so it's a new copy work this week. Um, it really only takes her one day to write it. But we're using a Brave Heart Guide. We're doing the last week of Johnny Tremaine. We did finish the book for Read Aloud. So she's going to do that. So I'll present it to her and talk about the stuff that's... Sorry about the banging. So I'll present it to her and talk about the stuff that's in the guide. And then um, while she's writing it, and then she still has crochet left. So while she's doing those things, I'm gonna do a circle time and some reading with the other kids. Another update, it is 11.15 a.m. We have finished all the individual school subjects and I have done a circle time and some reading of seasonal books with the younger kids. Um, this is actually earlier than we usually finish. It usually takes us until lunch at least to do that. Um, so I'm excited about that because today I'm planning on doing some group school. I'm hoping to get some history in and read some of our book, which is actually historical fiction as well. So it's kind of like history. Um, I don't think we'll get all of it done before lunch, but we'll at least start. Just as a note, we don't do group school every day and we've been doing it less than I have in past years. I love doing it, um, but with the four kids and managing everything, I'm trying to give myself a little bit of a break and not stress myself out. So we've been working really slowly through it. So we are still working on our history, doing uh, colonial America and the revolution. Um, we are actually finishing up the revolution, talking about um, the constitution and forming of the American government now. So um, yeah, so we'll be doing our Curiosity Chronicles lesson for today, as well as some other things, including our book. Um, we're currently reading Chains. Um, and I will link these things in the description box below. Um, I'm gonna set all that up and we'll get some of that done. It's again, I said about 11, 15, 11, 20. Um, so we'll probably do some of it, take a break for lunch and then come back to it after lunch. Chapter 42, Here we go. the United States writes the constitution. All right, since we paused, can somebody narrate to me? Kiara, can you get started this time? What did we learn? So they needed to, the Articles of Confederation were working, so. So they got together, so representatives from each state got together mm -hmm. and, and, and started drafting for new articles. Yeah, do you remember, um, do you remember what it was called when they all got together? Um, Senate? Um, not yet. It's not a Senate yet. They make a Senate, but they're making the... <laughs> they're writing the Constitution. So this is called the Constitutional Convention. Convention. Yes, it's the Constitu Constitutional Convention of what, 1787? So most of the killing. Most of the killing. Most of the killing.
also 1776, the British recapture Ticonderoga. I have that. Okay. Right. Okay. 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 How do you spell Saratoga? Ah. Okay, and then we just talked about something that you developed here at Trenton. Um, in 1783 was the Treaty of Paris. What was the Treaty of Paris? What does the legislative branch do? Um, makes laws. Yes, makes laws. Makes um, so sorry, yes, you are. Tyrion, just write legislative branch. I'll help you. Now, yeah, decide. So somebody makes the laws. Enforce the laws. Put them into action. Can you tell me about Phyllis Wheatley? Um, she was a black person who was sodded. How did somebody in Boston like? Yeah, she was taken by enslavers, right? And and she was but, no, uh, no. But she was no. very intelligent. Mm -hmm. And she wrote a book of poetry with the and she was educated in math, writing in in math, religion, and reading and writing. Okay, so we finished, we worked on some stuff in our unit books. Um, we finished our timelines we were working on before and also added a page about the Constitution and the three branches of government, um, So, which I find fun to learn about. Now we're just going to do a little bit reading this book. This is Chains by Lori, uh, Lori House Anderson. It's gotten a bunch of awards. It's about um, an enslaved, it's the, the main character is an enslaved girl in... Um, it mostly takes place in New York City during the Revolutionary War. So it's been it's been really engaging thus far, right guys? You liked it? So we're gonna see the chapters are pretty short, so we're gonna see how many we can get through. Okay, reading done. It's around three, three ten-ish, and we're gonna go do quiet time now, which means I'm gonna nurse the little guy. He's a year and a half, almost a year and a half, and he's been nursing in the. Um, he just nurses at night and in the really early morning, and then once during the afternoon. And it's not like a set time. It's not like three every day. It's like usually sometime between two and four. <laughs> so um, kind of where we're depending where we are at school and how tired and cranky he is. Um, the three-year-old could use a nap, but that's a little trickier. So we're going to see what she wants to do. I'm trying to get her to play quietly while I nurse him or come sit with us quietly. Neither of those always work. So yeah, we're going to try this and then, um, then we'll do what's next. friends it is 4 45 and it's dark outside because we're in vermont and it's that time of year so sorry about the lighting <laughs> so it took a little while to get the little the little one-year-old guy to sleep um the three-year-old i actually managed to get comfy and she fell asleep relatively quickly which was good because she needed it um but yeah once i got him asleep got him put on my back so um we are going to make um, okay, so hopefully my second grader will come up when I call him and he's gonna we're gonna work together to make some chocolate chip cookies um, I'm also going to be working on grating some carrots for carrot cake, which is what the three-year-old wants We have a lot of carrots that I pulled from the garden just before everything frozen snowed so 
Um, I've actually got a tub of them. I'm just gonna try to get the amount I need. Right, uh, so you might see I'm wearing this pink thing in my ear. It's one of those earbuds that goes around your ear because the other ones always fall out. Um, but I like to listen to podcasts and audiobooks, especially when, if I'm like cooking or cleaning and don't need to focus on the kids as much, like if they're sleeping or my husband's up or whatever. So um, I'm currently listening to, I'm gonna say the second in the series of The Daughter of the Pirate King, um, because the name of the second one kind of gives stuff away from the first one, but it's kind of like a, it's not the best quality writing ever. It's a young adult, like romance adventure. It's just kind of fun. So I'm actually almost done with that, the second book. And I think it's just a duology. I don't think it's a trilogy. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, pop a comment below if you have a book that you are currently loving. started on the carrots now and honestly it takes me a little while to do uh, chopping and grating and stuff I'm kind of slow at it so hopefully I'll get through three cups tonight and if not not a big deal anyway um, I'm gonna do carrots right now and while I'm doing carrots since these are for Thanksgiving I thought I would just briefly talk to you about Thanksgiving we don't teach the traditional story about the you know pilgrims and the Native Americans that most of us grew up with and that is the traditional story and there's so many books and movies and references to um one because it's it's inaccurate the way it's usually portrayed and um also it, it's in in that it's inaccurate in the way it's inaccurate is harmful to many native americans i know many um native people are um, not only offended by the stereotypes but hurt by Thanksgiving celebrated as it is um, because they see it as celebrating the genocide of their people um, so and I will put some resources on all this below too I know this is a heavy topic and it can feel it can make us feel really defensive and awkward because like we grew up with this and we're obviously by celebrating Thanksgiving not meaning anyone harm um, if you're like me, you grew up, like, it's a family holiday. It's a day that people get off of work and you celebrate together and you have this huge meal. And so it's like happy memories and happy times. And so, um, I don't think, I don't think we need to lose that. I just don't teach that story to my children. I do, we do talk about, um, we, we have at this point talked about, what that story is because they see it so often and then how it's inaccurate and how it might be harmful. I really enjoy, um, it's a newer book I believe called If You Lived at the Time of Plymouth. I think that's the name, but I will definitely have it linked below um, because it shows like accurately um, what happened. It's good for like elementary age students and up. Um, it's a little long, it is it is a picture book, but I don't think it's gonna hold like the preschoolers attention necessarily. Um, but even if as like as an adult, like you could see if your library has it or request them to get it because I just think it's a really good kind of re-education for those of us who may not have learned the correct story. And to be honest, they've found out, like, historians and archaeologists have found out more about... Mom. Hello. About that time. He's up. I'm going to keep him in here for a little while longer, though, because otherwise I have to chase him around. Um, people, you know, historians, archaeologists, anthropologists have all learned more about, um, you know, what, what really happened then, and just in even the last few years. So... Um, anyway, so we don't teach that, number one. What do we do? Well, obviously we do celebrate it. So I like to focus on the whole, you know, thankfulness, but also just like a good time with family 
Um, my husband gets the day off. M many of my family members get the day off. Um, and so we, we spend it with family for the most part. Um, this year we're actually going to my in-laws on Friday instead of Thursday because that works, works for my brother and sister-in-law and obviously we want to see them. And my husband happens to have both days off, so I'm going to make a meal here on Thursday and then we're going to go to their house on Friday. Um, and I get to see my baby niece, so I'm excited. Um, but the other things that we do are um, learn about Native American, Native American cultures. And so I have a lot of books on that. And to be honest, I, I, we do that throughout the year. I think with any of these like special days or months for certain groups, it's great and I think useful and helpful, but I also try to be mindful that I'm learning and teaching about them throughout the whole year um, and not just at those times. Um, but so, so yeah, um, I will link some of our favorite uh, books on Native Americans below. And then the other thing is I just get Thanksgiving books that aren't about that. So that are just about gratitude or just fun books about Thanksgiving. Um, I'm trying to think, I have, I have a few favorites. I really like Bear Says Thanks. I don't know if you know, there's a series. Um, another one we like is Bear Snores On. And um, it's just a really cute story about animals um, all gathering together and bringing things and saying thanks. And yeah, um, there's that one. There's Thanksgiving in the Woods, which is, um, I think based on a real family's tradition of going out to the woods and their community all gets together and they like decorate it with lights and um, all bring food and have a big thing out there. So there's lots of good books. Again, I'll link some of my favorites of those below. So I just, I just wanted to address that. Um, because yeah, um, you will see, um, like today we read, um, I have a big stack of books for around this time of year. And so I let, I let my children choose some to read. And, um, my three-year-old chose fry bread, which is, um, about, uh, fry bread is a, um, a dish that a lot of Native American cultures um, around around the whole country and continent <laughs> they make and so it's about that and it's a really cute book and actually the recipe in the back we haven't tried it yet um, we might do that oh the other thing I want to mention around Thanksgiving is that a lot of the traditional Thanksgiving foods are actually foods that are native to the Americas, so to to this land, the uh, uh, many of the um, well, not many, some of the native cultures call this land Turtle Island, which is another fun fact. Um, but they're native to Turtle Island, so um, things like turkeys and some other of the fowl um, that you might eat, native to here. Um, corn originated in Mesoamerica. It was actually developed by uh, native peoples and. Um, basically bread to be the corn we know it today. Um, cranberries are native here. I'm trying to think what else. A lot of those are like really traditional and so it's really cool to have those native foods and one of the other things that Thanksgiving is to me is like a harvest celebration. Now I really wish that we had ours in October like in Canada because from where we are up north here that would actually be a better time. Right now it's very very cold outside. We've had several days of freezing temperatures. So, and usually it's been a couple weeks of freezing temperatures. So yeah, we, <laughs> we're not getting much fresh out of the ground right now. Um, and so I would enjoy having it for that purpose in October. And in the future, I might try to do like a harvest Thanksgiving celebration in October. I think that'd be really fun. Then we could actually do it outside. But it still is, you know, a harvest celebration. I did pull these carrots up uh, about, not even a week ago, before I knew we were getting snow and really cold temperatures. So that got a little rambly, but um, yeah, those are kind of my thoughts. Um, hopefully someone, someone will find those resources helpful. Uh, I really enjoy them. All right, I guess I'll turn my book back on and focus on these carrots. You're in I hear sizzling. Hi everybody. Dinner is on the stove. That is that sizzling sound. Um, their father has finished work. He works from home, so he just had to emerge from his office. I thought I would take a minute to record what we did today. I am not always good about doing this every day. I try to at least do it once a week, but sometimes I forget what we did, especially what I did with the three-year-old in our individual school because I let her choose and I kind of play by ear what we, what activities, like I have an idea of 
but I don't plan out each day specifically on our activities. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and I pulled my planner out. I use the um, Erin Condren teacher planner. I've used it for several years and it works really well for me. I do adapt it a little bit because it's made for classroom teachers. The kids are going crazy right now. Okay, so it's gonna be loud. Right, so yes, I have my planner out. I'm gonna go ahead and try to write down what we did today. Let me see if I can show you. This is what it looks like. Um, I just, these are my kids' names up here. And um, so they each have their own column. And then this is for the family school or group subjects that are aimed at the older kids. And this here is for the preschool subject. So it's mainly circle time reading. Sometimes it's like outside or an art activity. And you can see here, I just kind of penciled in um, some of the things that I wanted to do this week for the group schools. And as you saw earlier, um, they have their books. This is the outside of my son's. Um, uh, their notebooks, the older two do, with their individual school items in it. And I like to look at that, especially when I don't get to it every day if I wait for the weekend, because it has like which pages of math and stuff they've done. So, I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure I've got everything in here, especially for my three-year-old. And um, yeah, record it. And then we will hopefully do a quick pickup and read aloud and that wraps up our day. I hope you enjoyed our day in the life and I'll talk to you later friends. Bye. You guys say bye? Bye! The smaller kingdoms, we clamoring for the job. They're probably worried about being eaten. Simmering said, do you think it would help if I sent my parents a letter? Probably not. Morwood said after a moment's consideration, but it can't hurt to try.